it could for the rest time just still living. So those are the things that we know. <laughs> and then the rest of this would be uh, things that we don't know. <laughs> so when you look at section 29.5, um, some of the things that we don't know, we've talked about quite a bit in module five, dark matter. We have some constraining parameters for that. Um, we have uh, things that relate to gravitational interactions of galaxies that kind of tells us that there is something that we are calling dark matter out there and it results in these specific concrete observations. And somehow if, you know, if it's not dark matter, if it's modified to Newtonian dynamics, those observations are still there. So whatever theory is the actual correct one, it must uh, explain it um, at some point. And the thing that I have not mentioned at all, and I will just uh, leave it to you, is this thing called the dark energy. So, um, you know, I told you how um, Einstein called the cosmological constant, this thing, his greatest blunder. Then you might wonder, hey, then why is this still there? Because um, I imagine this is the modern version of Einstein field equations. The reason this is here is um, it's connected to what we are calling dark energy. Um, in the 90s, when the scientists, when they were measuring, think the distances to the very distant galaxies using type 1a supernova, uh, they were trying to measure the rate at which the universe's expansion is slowing down because uh, they were trying to determine, uh, are, do we live in an open universe, closed universe, or Saddleback universe, I think all of them, model, those models are described in section 29.2. Um, and to their surprise, they found that expansion is not slowing down at all, it's actually accelerating. And um, within the kind of the Newtonian uh, universal gravitation, there's no way to make something like that happen. But within the Einstein field equations, there was a way to make that happen. And that's this cosmological constant. So we put it back in um, and it's called the dark energy. And our current model of uh, cosmology, it's called, uh, do we call it, uh, is that there? Um, let me just search a uh, standard model Big Bang cosmology. Uh, if you, so it's called the Lambda CDM model, and it's named after two things that we don't understand well, but that are important in describing this model. Lambda is that cosmological constant, the thing that's connected to dark energy. And the CDM is the cold dark matter, um, the amount of matter that we need to explain the gravitational pull that we observe, even though there's no way to attribute that to uh, normal matter. So, so this is uh, what we call standard cosmological model. This is our current best understanding of the universe, um, incorporating all the observational features. And, um, and as I was saying that it's named after two things that we don't understand well. So, um, so, you know, we are in, in a place in a lot of areas of physics where uh, it's very tantalizing. We feel like we understand a lot, a lot more than we could even imagine doing 50 years ago. But at the same time, there are um, missing gaps and pieces. Uh, you see something similar with the standard model of particle physics. It almost... Uh, uh, for historians of science, it almost uh, reminds you of the last days of the, the Ptolemaic uh, geocentric model where, where uh, there are lots of parameters to adjust. It's kind of explaining things you observe, but, um, but in a very non-natural, non-intuitive way. Um, so, so, you know, who knows? There could be a scientific revolution that's going to be a much better way to unify everything, tie everything together. Um, but my job is just tell you where we are. <laughs> so our current model of universe has these two things that we can't do without. Uh, without these, the model doesn't hold, but we also don't understand them very well. And um, 
and there are other pieces here. Uh, inflationary university referring to how uh, how homogeneous the entire CMB background, CMB appears to be, especially the parts that are opposite that couldn't possibly have any causal connection to each other. So, um, so one way to solve that would be to hypothesize that in the very beginning of the universe, all of that were connected together, and then there was a period of inflation, uh, superluminal <laughs> inflation that kind of expanded out. And um, we don't have a exact thing that we know would have caused this. It's more of a hey, we need this to make our cosmological model work. So we're gonna. We'll say that something like this should have happened, and we'll try to figure out later what the causation of that might have been. So, but this is built out into our current model. The inflation in this period is what would explain the features of the cosmic microwave background. And the uh, last, this section, by the way, is not covered um, because mainly because I don't believe in anthropic principle. <laughs> um, but I guess one way to summarize it is. Um, we have something called, um, you might call it fine tuning problem. Uh, I mentioned uh, adjusting parameters and um, we appear to be living in a, um, in a finely tuned universe. There are, are um, yeah, and that's considered problematic. <laughs> um, and because there's no, no mechanism to explain why they, these parameters that could have any value, um, like Hubble constant could have any value, but they have this particular value that seems to be very finely tuned for formation of galaxies like ours, which would be finely tuned for formation of solar system like ours, which seems to be finely tuned for formation for planet like Earth, which is finely tuned for existence of sentient life forms like us. Um, and anthropic principle is one way to explain it, but the way it's explaining is hey, that's the only way you could have human beings who would raise those exact questions. Um, so it's not really an answer. Um, and uh, I mean, you know, you can read about it yourself. I'm not going to uh, say that I believe in it. I don't. Uh, but at the same time, so this is uh, highlighting something that we don't fully know. And anthropic principle, frankly, is a kind of a surrender. It's a uh, saying these questions cannot be answered. And, you know, that may be the case. I mean, um, but it's just, uh, it's, a, it's a, a sort subtle issue with the, our current model that it's got these gaps and holes here and there that we can't quite fully explain. Uh, 